every father strives to bring his son up to be 100% American, but not Chester A. Riley. Riley strives to make his son a 200% American. So now we find Junior Riley on a pleasant Sunday afternoon being lectured on one of the fundamental principles of the American way of life, as Riley sees it, namely that the man who gets ahead does so on his own merit. I'm shocked. Junior, I'm absolutely shocked. But, Pa, I never I... thought my own son would act like that. But, Pa, Is this the but... way I brought you up? No, Pa, Now you go I... and do a thing like this. I'm sore, Junior. I'm really sore. I'm burning up. I'm... I'm... I'm speechless. But, Pa... I do want to hear your excuses. Oh, you're home, Riley. Where were you all afternoon? Never mind where I was. Peg, ask your son where he was. I tell you, I'm so burned up, I'm speechless. Yes, I know. I could hear you being speechless two blocks away. <laughs> Where do you hear this, Peg? And you always said that Junior is the kind of a kid I was when I was a boy. Well, where do you think he was this afternoon? Junior, you went to the burlesque show. <laughs> oh, no, Mom. I was over at my math teacher's house. Oh, well, what's so terrible about that, Riley? He was raking her leads and asked him why. Well, I still don't see the harm. I haven't been doing so well in math, and she lives over in the next block. So I figured if I could break leaves for her, I'd stand a better chance of getting a good mark. Bribery. Out and out bribery. Here I raise a boy, and I have hopes that someday he'll turn out to be a banker or, or a doctor or an engineer. And what do I get? A politician. Now, wait, Riley, it isn't that bad. Just because he raked the teacher's leaves. You don't understand, Peg. It ain't the teacher's leave. It's the principal. <laughs> For years, I've been telling him the only way to get ahead is to do it under your own steam. Merit. That's what counts. Not bribery, not pull or influence. Merit. That's all I care about. The principal. Well, your father's right, Junior. Besides, why couldn't he rake our leave? <laughs> That's not the point. But... What your father said before is true. That's not the way to get ahead in the world. Well, it's one way. But it's not the American way. Can you imagine me doing a thing like that? Well, it's... Uh, no, Pop. <laughs> of course not. Look at my career at Stevenson Aircraft. Look at the way I started out there ten years ago as an ordinary riveter. But I worked hard. I didn't use no pull. I didn't think up angles. Because I knew that ability is the only thing that counts. And today, only ten years later, look where I... Look where he... Look at Henry Ford. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, gee, Papa can't do any harm to have a little pull. Don't mean a thing. Not in the long run. Work. That's the secret of success. Work. That's what made this country great. We took it when it was nothing but a wilderness, and we worked and worked until we made it the richest country in the world. But why are you one of the poorest men in it? <laughs> I haven't got any pull. I mean, uh, 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 go to your room, Junior. Okay, Pop. And work on your mathematics. That's the way you'll get ahead. Okay, Pop. I'm sorry I yelled, Peg, but that kid's got to learn. You're right, dear. For once. Like I said to Gillis, only this afternoon. Gillis, I said... Where were you this afternoon? Over at my boss's house, fixing his roof. That's good. We can use the extra money. You bet we can. Too bad we ain't getting any. <laughs> You're not. Oh, no. I'm just doing him a favor. You see, there's an opening for a foreman's job at the plant, so I figured Chester that... Mr. Riley, after the speech you've just made to Junior, you have the nerve to stand there and tell me that you deliberately went to your boss's house to fix a roof just so you could get in good with him? How could you? It was easy. <laughs> Oh, I can't understand you, Ryan. Well, let me explain, Peg. The boss happened to drop this remark about a leak in his roof. So Gillis offered to work on it. And being Gillis is my best friend, I offered to help him. Not that I care about the foreman's job. I just don't want Gillis to get it. You, <laughs> you see? You bet I see. Boot licking, that's what it is. And what's more, the roof of this house has been leaking for six months. Why don't you fix that? What for? The boss don't live here. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Don't you feel like a hypocrite after that big lecture you gave Junior? 
Don't use pull. Don't use influence. Work. Depend on your ability. Well, my case is different. Why is it different? Well, uh, I, uh, I ain't got no ability. <laughs> uh, thought you had me trapped, huh? Gillis. What's the matter, pal? Did you get out of the wrong side of the bed this well, morning? I had an argument with Peg last night. You know what she said to me. How should I know? I ain't the type of person who goes snooping around at night, eavesdropping on his next-door neighbor. Well, well, she bawled me out for fixing the boss's roof with you. Boy, I told her off plenty. You were right. After all, you ain't got no ability. <laughs> Gillis, you hurt. Uh, accidental. I was out walking my dog, and his leash got caught on your front doorknob. But believe me, pal, when I heard her rip into you, it sure brained me up. I was so mad, I... 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 I know you were speechless. Yeah. But sometimes, Gillis, I wish you were earless, too. You know, Riley, that wife of yours sure has got another not a nerve making cracks about us helping out on our boss's roof. Well, sure. After all, we got to think of our future. Sure, we want to get ahead. We've got families to think of. Yeah, we're doing it for our family. Let them call us hypocrites. Let them say we're bootlickers and toadies and boss lovers. Oh, Gillis. She was right. I ain't fit to associate with human beings. Yeah. I ain't fit to associate with human beings, neither. We just have to go around with each other. <laughs> I'm ashamed. A body without a soul. What's the use living when you lose your self respect? Now, well, wait a minute, Gillis. We got a chance to get it back. Yeah, how? We're going to give that conniving Stevenson who tricked us into working for nothing a bill. That's it, right. Then we'll be men again. Yeah. I'll make it out right now. Yeah, here's his. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, to Mr. Carl Stevenson, Esquire. Yeah, I abbreviate that. Yeah, I did. ESS. Oh. <laughs> For professional services rendered. Ipso facto, fixing one roof. Uh, what's the ipso facto for? I don't know. I see it on a bill somewhere. <laughs> well, leave it in. It looks good. Fixing one roof. Four hours at $3 per hour. Total? Uh, $12. Double time for work and Sundays. Yeah, make $24. Uh, three Cokes consumed on the job. But we took him out of his icebox. Well, he don't know that. <laughs> that makes a grand total of uh, twenty-four dollars and fifteen cents. Twenty-four fifteen. Huh. Boy, I'm beginning to feel like a man again. Good. Uh, Riley, yeah. you think maybe when the boss gets this bill, he'll blow his top and maybe fire us? Huh, Riley? Well, let him. I don't care. I ain't afraid. And to prove it, give me that pencil, Gillis. I'll sign it. G I L L I S. There. <laughs> You're right. And to prove I ain't afraid neither, I'm signing it, Riley. Give me that pencil. R I L E Y. Well, here we are, Riley. You got the bill? Yeah, boy, I can hardly wait to see the look on Stevenson's face when we slap it on him. <laughs> well, let's go in, right? No, wait, wait a minute, Gillis. Before we go in, you know, anything might happen in there with the boss. But I want you to know that no matter what happens, I'm sticking with you to the end, pal. And I'm sticking with you, pal. And this ain't just talk, Gillis. Actions speak louder than words. So, here, pal. Hey, this is a ticket for the USC Notre Dame game tomorrow. Well, I have two. I got him from Debs' boyfriend. He's a sub on USC. Here, take it. It's yours, pal. Right. You're doing this for me? Good. Why, they're all sold out. You can get 15 bucks for this ticket. Yeah, I know. But with me, friendship comes first. So I'm letting you have it for 14. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. And if I forget to give you the dough, remind me on payday. Oh, now, Gillis. And yes. keep on reminding me every payday. <laughs> well, let's go in and face the enemy. Yeah, together, like buddy. Yeah. And we ain't gonna crack on a fire. No, sir, we ain't retreating an inch. Well, this is it, buddy. Zero hour. Yeah. We're going over the top. I'm with you, soldier. Forward, march! Riley. Hey, wait, 
yourself. Where are you going? Wait. Oh. When did you two get drafted? <laughs> Billy, we're here on business. Yeah, serious business. We want to see the boy. We'll come back some other time. He's in a bad mood. He's going over the cost sheet. Well, we're in a worse mood. Tell him we're here. But, Riley, I'm warning you. He... Yes, Mr. Stevenson? Billy, what's this $8 item here against transportation? Oh, that was Albertson in the machine shop. He went down to Santa Monica to pick up that box of special rivets, and he took a taxi. Oh, he did, did he? Taxis. What am I running here, a resort? Since when did the buses stop running? Everybody around here thinks I'm made of money. Fire Albertson. <laughs> you heard, Gillis? I heard. Any other guys here and that would turn yellow. Yeah, but not you, right? You neither, Gillis. No. Yeah. Don't think for one minute that I still ain't got the guts to walk in it. I believe you, and don't think I ain't got the guts to do it. I believe you, too. Well, now that we've proved it, we can tear up this bill. <laughs> yeah, well, after all, it's not the money. It, it's the principle. Yeah, let's get out of here, pal. Billy. Yes, Mr. Stevenson. I don't see a voucher here for those football tickets. I couldn't get them, Mr. Stevenson. All sold out. Shall I try the speculators? No, no, I'm not spending $40 for two football tickets. Keep on trying the stadium. He expects miracles. You boys want to be made foreman? Get him a couple of tickets for tomorrow's game. Foreman? Is that a fact? Foreman? Is that a fact? Well, he'd be very grateful. Are you coming, Riley? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Uh, two tickets, huh? Not one. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on, Gillis. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming. Two tickets, huh? Not one. Nah, uh, see you later, Millie. C- come on, Gillis. Uh, Riley, no. No! You double crossed her. I know what's going on in your mind. You, Welcher, I know what you're up to. You want me to sell you my ticket? You want me to sell you my ticket? Well, don't you worry. I'll get it. You'll have to fight for it. Oh, so it's a fight you want. Okay with me. No Riley ain't afraid of no Gillis. And no Gillis is afraid of no Riley. Choose your weapon. I will. My son, Junior, against your son, Egbert. <laughs> rounds to a decision. It's a deal. When? My backyard. When? Right now. And when my junior knocks out your Egbert, that'll prove the kind of a yellow rat you are. Well, we'll bring you the second act of The Life of Riley in just a moment. There's radiance for you in Prell Shampoo. Yes, there's radiance for you in Prell Shampoo. Procter & Gamble's Radiant Cream Shampoo in the handy tube. That's because Prell gives your hair a radiance you never knew was there. Leaves your hair more radiant than any soap shampoo, cream, or liquid. For you see, Prell simply cannot leave a dulling soap film to hide the true highlights of your hair, as so many ordinary shampoos do. Instead, Prell uncovers the natural brilliance of your hair, leaves it radiantly soft, radiantly smooth, radiantly lovely. And with Prell, there's no telltale dandruff to mar that look of loveliness. For Prell removes such dandruff in as little as three minutes. Yes, Prell leaves your hair radiant. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, Riley, what are you doing home so early? Riley, what's the matter? Uh, what's up, Pa? Huh? You look so wild. You? Well, I'm wild. I'm raging. Well, what happened? A man can only take so much from that all. What are you raving about? That's no good double-crossing, Gillis. Oh, I thought he was your best friend. Yeah, so did I. We've been pals for a lifetime, like two fountain pens. <laughs> and then he squirts ink in my eye. <laughs> but this time he went too far. This time he's going to get his. Now, wait, Riley. I won't have you fighting Gillis. No, you stay out of this, Peg. Sometimes if a man wants to save his self-respect, there's got to be a fight. You'll get hurt. No, I won't. Oh, how do you know? Because Junior's doing the fighting. <laughs> Who, me? I'm going to fight Mr. Gillis. No, Egbert. Riley, have you gone out of your mind? But, but, but I like Egbert. He, he's my best friend. I don't want to fight him. My own son, Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, of all the... This is the most ridiculous... You have a quarrel with Gillis, and you want Junior to fight... Why don't you and Gillis fight? Hey, fight? Me? With my weak arches? 
and poor Gillis with his low blood pressure. We got our families to think of. So you get Junior and Egbert to fight. Well, why stop there? Why not have me and Mrs. Gillis slug it out? Would you? <laughs> I mean, listen, Peg, I, I got no you time You listen to... to me. This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. And if you think I'm going to let you do... Peg, you don't understand. I've got to get that football ticket. Oh, what ticket? The one I gave Gillis. He won't sell it back to me, but if I get it, then I'll have two to give to the boss, and then I'm essentially to be made foreman. Now, look here, Riley. You forget all this nonsense about fighting, and let's have a little peace and quiet around oh, here. Oh, okay, Peg, okay, I'll forget it. Must be some way to get that ticket out. Oh, will you stop? I can only trick him into it some way. Riley, is it worth it? How can I get him to... to... I got it. Peg, I got it. What a brainwave. Riley, I won't stand for another one of your brainwaves. You don't even know what it is yet. This is a great idea. Will you hear? I phone up Gillis, see? Yeah, and then what, Pop? I pretend that I'm Stevenson. Stevenson? Well, sure, I imitate his voice. Oh, Oh, you can't do that. Well, sure I can. Listen... Hello, Stevenson speaking. How's that sound? Sounds like you have a cold. <laughs> oh, go on. It's a perfect imitation. Gillis will fall for it like a ton of bricks. I'll tell him I heard he has an extra ticket, and I'd appreciate it if he'd let Riley have it. He won't dare say no, and then I got him. It'll never work, Riley. Oh, no? What? <laughs> Nobody but me could think of a stunt like this. <laughs> I'm busy thinking. How can I get that ticket from Riley? Hello? Hello? I'd like to speak to Gillis, please. Just a minute. It's for you, Jimsy. Who is it? It's Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he has a cold. Riley, what does he want? I don't want to talk to him. Hang up. No, wait. I just got an idea. What an idea. What an idea. What, Jimsy? Hello? Hello? Hold the wire. I'll talk to him, all right, but I'm going to pretend I'm Stevenson. I'll say I'm visiting Gillis, and I'll order him to give his ticket to Gillis. You get it? Oh, Jimsy, that's clever. <laughs> Watch me operate. Uh, hello? Hello? Who is this? This here is Stevenson. Who is this? This is Stevenson, too. <laughs> I said this is Stevenson. Yes, this is Stevenson. I'm over here at Gillis. Ridiculous. How can I be at the Gillis's when I'm over here at the Riley? Look, this is Stevenson. Oh, no, this is Stevenson. Huh? huh? You phony. You fake. I'll never trust you again as long as I live. Likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> can't depend on nobody. In the end, your friends always let you down. Well, I learned my lesson. This is the last time anybody's going to let me down. Would you care to bet? <laughs> oh, it's you. Yes, it is I indeed. Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. Well, I don't feel so good, Digger. I don't say this to everybody, but see your doctor. Uh, I, I don't need a doctor. I'm, I'm all mixed up in my mind. I, I think maybe I ought to see one of them psychiatrists. Oh, nonsense. Too many people are running to psychiatrists these days. In our profession, we have a saying. The mind will take care of itself. Just look after the body. Life is funny, Digger. The older you get, the more troubles you have. We don't have fun like we did when we were kids. Ah, the carefree days of our youth. Yeah, those were the days. Remember when we went on that picnic with those girls and we took your father's business vehicle without his knowing? Yes, <laughs> and we didn't know that old man McGillicuddy was still in the back. No. <laughs> it was the first time in 40 years that old man McGillicuddy went out with girls. Oh, those were the days. Yeah, now nothing but trouble. 
Maybe I can help? No. Not unless you can let me have a ticket for tomorrow's game. If I had one, I could get promoted to foreman, I think. But they're all sold out. It's hopeless. Oh, come, come, Riley. Never say die, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Go to a speculator. Yeah, but they want 20 bucks. It's worth it to become foreman. Well, yeah, sure, but I ain't got the dough. I'll lend it to you. Here. But I don't know when I can pay you back. Will you carry me? Glad to. <laughs> this isn't the first time I've carried you, and it won't be the last. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Digga, but you're sure you can spare it? Well, of course. I've had a very good year. I've been filing up customers. Yeah, gee, you've been in business a long time. I bet if all your customers were laid end to end... They are. <laughs> well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. Yes, Mr. Stevenson. Ah, any uh, luck with the football tickets, Billy? No, sir. But the speculators have... No, no, no. I will not pay speculator prices. It's highway robbery. Just forget about it, Billy. Uh, I'm going home now. Yes, sir. Hey, Millie, Millie, is the boss in? i got to see the boss. What about... Oh, you'll never guess. Millie, you're looking at a new foreman. What? Look, look, look. Two tickets for the boss for the big game. Oh, oh. I think he just left. I'll catch him at the elevator. Good, good. He wants a switch for me, Yeah, you? leave it to me. I'll sit right here and take all the messages. <laughs> Wait till that jump Riley finds out I put one over on him. Cost me 20 bucks, but it's worth it. <laughs> Millie, I, I gotta see the boss quick. I got him two tickets. Cost me 20 bucks, but it's worth it. But, uh, Millie, Millie, didn't you hear me, Millie? Millie, you look different. You need a shave. You, you... <laughs> you look. You weasel. You double crush. Hello, boy. Boss. I got two tickets. Look, Here's the fifty the ticket, line. Where you are? 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 Where Four tickets. Well, I'll tell you what. Here. One for you, Riley. Hmm? One for you, Gillis. And two for me. Naturally, I won't insult you by offering to pay for my two, but I insist on paying for your two. Yeah, but... but no, no, but, no, but, no. I insist on paying whatever they cost you. How much? Well, boss, if you... Oh, here, here's it's the it's price it's right it's on the ticket. Huh? Three sixty apiece. What? Likewise. Here you are, Riley. Three sixty. There you are, Gillis. Enjoy the game with my compliments. Well, have a nice weekend, boys. But don't be late for work on Monday. I just hired a new foreman. He's a tough baby. <laughs> well, have fun. What a revolting development this is. will return in just a moment. At the first sign of unsightly dandruff, it's time to do something. And that's when millions of folks all over America shampoo with Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. Because Prell removes unsightly dandruff in as little as three minutes. That fact was proven by a group of doctors. In case after case, even stubborn dandruff was controlled by only two Prell shampoos a week. Yes, Prell leaves hair radiantly clean. The first time you use it, radiantly lovely, too. Soft and smooth, easy to manage. So the next time you shampoo, ask for the radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. Ask for Prell. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo, leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright. Not a bit of dandruff is in sight. Comes in a tube, handy, too. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo. You know, 
there, there, there's something wrong, Gillis. Now, let, let, let's try and figure this out once more. Figure we... it out. Figure it out. Riley, for Pete's sake, that's all you've been doing since we got into this here stadium. Yeah, now, look, uh, first I, uh, I got two free tickets from my daughter. You got two free tickets, and you gave me one. Yeah, and they cost me nothing. But you owe me 14 for one. Yeah, but the boss gave me 360 for that one. Oh, no, 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 no. He gave you 360 for the one that cost you 20. Uh, that leaves 1640. Yeah, but and don't you could... see? You paid twenty dollars for that one ticket too. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I got 360 back, so that means 20 minus 360 plus 1640 minus uh, no plus no. Uh, no no minus uh, yeah yeah plus. Riley, right uh, will you stop already? Uh, we'll figure out after the game. It's costing us a fortune, this idiot. So at least that's what. <laughs> Look, I think they're starting the game. Well, well. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Let's watch. What's that, Gillis? What's happening? And there goes the final gun, and the game is over. It's a losing fight. invite you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Van Dyke as Riley. The script is by Reuben Chip, Alan Lipscott, and Dick Powell. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. And remember, for more radiant hair free of unsightly dandruff, get the shampoo in the tube. P-R-E-L-L. Prell Shampoo. <laughs> 